Welcome to ILTV's Israel Weekly, where we discuss the latest in Israel's geopolitical developments. I'm Aaron Porras, and our top stories tonight focus on Prime Minister Netanyahu nixing a momentous UN deal to resettle African asylum seekers, and the anti-Semitic lies and propaganda propagated in the Palestinian Authority that is supported by the West. Now, joining me in these discussions is Middle East expert and colonel in the reserves, Dr. Ruben Berko, author and activist, Rabbi Susan Silverman, the founder and executive director of the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies, Dr. Martin Sherman, and finally, member of the Meretz Party and the Periphery Movement, Abi Dabush. So, to our first topic, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu recently signed a landmark agreement with the UN High Commission for Refugees, in which nearly half of the asylum seekers in Israel would be relocated by the UNHCR, and the other half absorbed by Israel. But less than just seven hours after praising this agreement, Netanyahu <coughs> caved to pressures from within his coalition and canceled the deal. Now, with renewed efforts to deport, along with a push for draft legislation allowing the bypassing of court rulings, nearly 40,000 Africans in Israel are again looking for any clarity at all. We are very grateful to the public of Israel because at least we have been living with them here more than a decade. We are very grateful for the public. But the government, the government alone, has been tortured us terribly and prosecuted us. And I don't know, it's something very terrible for us. And right now also, it just it is a psychological war. He is just, they use it on their own political issue. And we, refugees, demanding, please stop torturing us our mentality. We are human beings. You know, we are human beings. All right, now, to start, Netanyahu, when announcing this deal, was praising it and saying how good it was for, for this country and for the asylum seekers, for everyone involved. Um, after canceling that deal, you know, what is his plan now? Uh, that, while praising it, he basically admitted that the previous plan was unenforceable. So what's, what's the current plan? I would begin with the fact that uh, negotiating with the United Nations under the headline refugees is uh, an awful mistake from the very beginning. These people, most of them, or the majority of them actually, are not answering the definition of refugees because they are immigrants. I'll, I'll, I'll complete. Mm -hmm. Because they, uh, according to international law, once you have passed over a state in which you are not uh, exposed to danger, such as Egypt, for example, you're no longer considered to be uh, uh, refugees. That's why I, on the very beginning, would not agree to negotiate with the United Nations who deal with refugees. This is one point. The other point, I listened uh, carefully to what uh, this young man said. I wouldn't say, instead of him, that the uh, government is using them as a tool for political needs. They created a need to handle them under the, uh, the uh, situation in Israel in which they are on a, a burden on, our, a, on Israel, as well as Ukrainians and other refugees coming to Israel refusing to leave. This needs a solution, of course. I feel a lot of empathy towards them, but they are immigrants. At the end of the day, we should take care of them as immigrants that has penetrated to Israel without any permission. Rabbi Solomon? Well, first of all, when they many of them when they came over the border, um, to our credit as as a society, our soldiers met them with compassion and brought them in, which means that they were accepted over the border by our soldier representatives. Uh, and this is a story I've heard over and over again, both from soldiers and from the refugees themselves. When you talk about Egypt being Egypt is a very dangerous place for them. So if you're looking for if you're looking for a loophole for human survival and human <clears throat> dignity, you could probably find a loophole for that. I'm not looking for a loophole for human survival and human dignity and human beings. And I'm not looking for a loophole for the state of Israel being different than any other country. And in fact the our slogans, soldiers are uh, in fact slogans. At, at it, fact no, our no, 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 ha, no. In fact, our soldiers on the border sometimes had a tug of war with the Egyptian soldiers. And I met with, with soldiers who I came to us. I was a soldier. Us. I met a lot of soldiers who tried uh, to fall. To, hold, hold on. To, yes. Let's, let's, let's hear the answer. One second. They didn't accept them. But, if, but the, the, one, uh, one, the, the one, justice one. in Israel forced uh -huh. the soldiers to accept them. One moment, Doc. Yeah, uh, and there were soldiers who accepted them over the border, and there were times that we had a tug of war because they were hearing on their um, on their earpieces and with the Egyptian soldiers on the other side, oh, who are you sending back to us? Oh, are there women? Because every single woman was raped. So yes, Israel did the right thing by bringing them over here, and now we need the right thing by not looking at the world 
the world has treated us in one of two ways, either imprisoning us or deporting us, or as, as our prime minister is doing with the NIF right now, stare, uh, um, uh, uh, scapegoating okay. us, right? Um, so we need to change the paradigm of, of cruel and cruel. And we need to say we are the Jewish state, we're the most innovative country in this, in this world, we're the second in patents only to the United States, this tiny little country, and we need to use our creativity and our innovativeness and our scrappiness for moral issues. And if we created Startup Nation University for refugees, we could change the whole world because we could create a curriculum that would teach uh, one and a half million Eritreans abroad, um, starting edge, cu cutting edge technology from Israel, and we could be we could have a million ambassadors of light from Israel to the U.S. Syrian soldiers who are escaping. Well, so you're so saying I'd, I'd all like or to, nothing? Is that what you're well, saying? All no. or nothing? Well, like, you, like you, you know what? Let's consistent hope. left accept all refugees of the world. Since well, I'd, so I'd like to, you I'd like to all or nothing. So basically, oh, if you yeah, have I cancer think, and you I, go I to the doctor and the doctor says, you know what? I can't cure everybody with cancer, so I'm not going to cure you. Like that's not an attitude that makes you feel good. Let's bring this back to the legal. Logic. Let's bring this back to yeah. the legal ramifications because I'd like to address the fact that Israel is a signatory to two UN documents, uh, both in 1951 and in 1967, which define refugees for us, basically, that we have accepted that definition. Are we not beholden to those agreements? Well, uh, you know, I'd be the first person to agree that Israel's handled this, this uh, situation very badly. And, and I, don't think it's a, I don't think it's a question of legal formalistics. I think it has a problem that Israel has to solve and it's allowed a, a, a problem which could have been a public relations coup to degenerate into a public relations debacle. Of course, every sovereign nation not only has the right but the duty to regulate who comes into its borders and has, regu has, has the right perhaps and the duty to eject those people who come in uh, illegally. Having said that, uh, you, you know, the, the, this population is 1%, 1 of the Israeli population. But, but, but on the other hand, there is a store of 50 million people in in Sudan and Eritrea who who could uh, who, who could arrive here if this was. I think Israel was very lax in 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 dealing with the problem when it started. I think it could have been more sensitive and nuanced in dealing with it once they'd stopped the flow into it. You know, the, instead of well, having, I said, I think, of, I think instead you, of having, you mentioned it. I mean, the flow has been stopped. Yeah. So so I mean, so, who, so, who else you, is, you know, so, is that so, risk so of I, I think you know, instead of instead of. A, a, a detention center, they could have set up a training center, they could have given a five-year permit of people to stay here. I think it would have been a problem that was much easier to diffuse if it had been handled in, in a different way. I think it's been a bit ham-fisted in dealing with the, the problem, and I don't think the, le the, the legal niceties are important here. You have a problem which you have to diffuse. And I think uh, there, there are many ways you could do it with, without uh, resorting to brutal and sensitive yeah. methods. Harry? Uh, I, I think that we all agree that uh, there is no pol policy of uh, this government. Uh, I, I believe that Netanyahu was really cynical in what you described. Uh, you know, I thought it was uh, five hours or something like that. There are really two problems right now. There, are, there is uh, the problem of the asylo asylum seekers, which is a global pro problem. We should be part of the solution, not only part of the problem. And the other problem is the uh, problem in the southern uh, uh, neighborhoods, in, the, in Tel Aviv, Neve Sha'anan, Kiat Shalom, Atikva, and other neighborhoods. And Netanyahu was really cynical because those neighborhoods are neglected for many, many years. And right now there is a, a, some kind of a way that they try to, to use those people, those people uh, which was neglected all those years, and trying to uh, get them against the asylum seekers. And you know what? They they not succeeding in that. Right. A lot of people from the southern neighborhoods in Tel Aviv are with the asylum, asylum oh. seekers mm -hmm. and, sold so and see themselves, more. a lot of them, lot. and see themselves part of the, uh, of the same community. And this oh. is really important. And this is part of the solution. Of course, uh, uh, we need to find another solution for those people mm -hmm. to go. Uh, there, there are initiatives in uh, the kibbutzim and other places, so going but part of it is to find uh, for those people, most of them really good people, uh, find them a way to, to live here going, in a, a very distant go, way. Going back to what you mentioned, though, about uh, Netanyahu uh, you know, and his cynicism and, and kind of his behaviors, 
many people have speculated in the wake of his kind of capitulation, you could call it, to, to his coalition, have speculated that he's unfit in some way uh, to lead because he's not you know, strong enough to fight uh, for, for what is a good deal. Uh, would you agree with this? It's, uh, the answer is simple. Uh, I believe that Netanyahu really meant it when he signed or intended to sign this agreement. Okay. But unfortunately, it happens that uh, nor, not Germany nor other states... Germany states was who, never one of the states. Uh, sorry. No, none of the states that uh, was supposed that to that's cooperate with that Netanyahu. That is they ignored... That that is well, well, so I... With the UN, it's not so. The so UN, I'll, I'll UN agree. is totally impotent no, in, in, no, it's a, so, but, in yeah. any tragic matter but, in, in, in the world. So, Dr. Dr. Berko, you are not I dealing will, with UN. UN uh, is Dr. Berko, uh, Dr. Berko, I have to. Dr. Berko. Somebody must <laughs> absorb these people. Founded? And beyond the headline UN, there are states but, to absorb them. None of these states were Berger, ready none, none to of, get them. No, but, but, the none, none the ones that, uh, but I'll say that Netanyahu was the name to, was the one to name Germany. Right, uh, and it was not true. Germany. 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 The only way Germany was involved. Well, Germany, well, Germany and Uganda, states, and, and Rwanda. So, no, those were all lies. I think, 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 not uh, people are suffering, and Rabbi, uh, uh, this uh, young, uh, this uh, young lady knows as a rabbi that the Bible obliges well, uh, us to take care for so our own poor people and for first. Others. Uh, well, Thirty-six for times you're told to treat yeah, the stranger as a sin. You know what? No, uh, uh, don't shout at me, please. <laughs> I, 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 I well, hear final you comment. Well. Thirty-six final times comment. the Bible has told us mm -hmm. to treat the stranger as a citizen among us. That's, That's twelve why, times. Hagia, Hagia. Okay. Not an oh, attack on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This is not oh, 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 of Gerim. This is not please. a story of a, a one unique person. We are that speaking about a okay. phenomena and agitation, I'd like, I'd like a wave the final... of immigrants that threatening uh, this society, Dr. Berkel, like the society, the poor people of Israel. It is not right. Dr. Berkel, please, I'd like to hear the final problem on account of other ones. Dr. Berkel, I'd like to hear the end of this, and then we'll move on to the next comment was Next turned topic. away for those exact reasons. What, for those, what did you say? The U.S. St. Louis was turned away for those exact reasons. We can't take you all of Europe. You compare a strategic oh, hold on, hold on. people that escaped from death, from surely death, from the Nazis. This is one story. What? This story is people are escaping That's, through okay. Egypt, looking uh, for Montreal, work, yeah, not a very for dangerous for their lives. Yeah. 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 This is a huge difference. Do you know what happened to Eritrea? I accept this comparison at all. Uh, so and, and that's very popular. That's very popular. But the reality is, when people leave, people are not going to be leaving here. They're going to take prison. And the reason is no. they are hearing from everybody. Right. Right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have to cut this off. I have to cut to, this to off. Eritrea? I, I, would really, I would really love to continue this. I'm very sorry to, to cut it off, but I have to. So on to our next topic. The United Kingdom is coming under fire now for supporting anti-Israel and anti-Semitic attitudes. The accusations leveled against the UK come following both the news of Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn attending an anti-Semitic Passover Seder and an Impact SE report showing that the UK funded 20 million pounds just this year towards hate-filled education in the Palestinian Authority. Now, together with uh, many anti-Semitic attacks across the globe, the two reports leave many speculating how peace, both in Israel and abroad, can ever be achieved in light of such hate-filled misinformation. What I'm worried about, and what any decent person I hope would be worried about, has got nothing to do with a Middle Eastern country, and it has everything to do with anti-Jewish racism. That's what our community is on about. You know, the Jewish community is saying, enough is enough with the anti-Semitism swirling around the Labour Party that is being fostered by Jeremy Corbyn's inaction We've had lots of words from the leader of the opposition, and they're welcome so far as they go, but actions speak louder than words. I'm going to start, uh, I'll start with you, uh, Avi. Th this time, you know, when we're looking at the UK, we have at least 36% of British adults believe one or more anti-Semitic stereotype to mm -hmm. be true. One in every three British Jews is considered emigration uh, over the past two years, and anti-Semitic crimes be, uh, from 2004 to 2016 have risen 45 percent while the total arrests for those two years was I think 15. So how do we go about solving this issue? 
I, I don't really know, you know, how to solve this, this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, specifically about this uh, carbon issue, uh, you know, we, we have to fight against uh, anti-Semitic anti uh, politicians. If if it is the case, you know, I saw that my friend uh, Chilik Ba, which is the representative of the Labour Party here in Israel, is not part of their conferences uh, in England because of that. And that is good. And for me, as a one uh, as a member of a uh, uh, left uh, wing party mm. it is very important but it is really important to fight also uh, anti-semitic uh, politicians from the right in uh, europe and part of uh, uh, our leadership uh, netanyahu and others are supporting them we saw it in hungary we saw it in, in poland and other places and we need to to uh, uh, watch ourselves in the light of our racism it is really important to fight anti-Semitism, but it's also really important to fight racism. As we talked about the asylum seekers, part of it is really racism. Doctor? Well, first of all, I, I don't think there's any institu institutionalized raci racism in Israel. I don't think that the, okay. I don't think that the uh, opposition to the migrants is based on, on, uh, on, on, on a sense of racial superiority. I think it's based... On, on, on practical issues, which we can argue about whether they were treated well or not, but I, I, I would be very, very wary of, of accusing the Israeli society of institutionalized uh, uh, racism. If you go into any university class, you can see people of all different colors and all different uh, uh, origins, and it's ba 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 basically almost insulting to say that there's some kind of racism. People may have certain uh, social, facts, people, you know. people might have so social prejudices, but there's certainly no institutionalized or, or uh, uh, racism here. What do you want to tell people who they against should like? Arabs, and who they, uh, against other communities? Uh, excuse, excuse me. Uh, uh, there, uh, can you point uh, to uh, an uh, institutionalized uh, uh, racism uh, against no, Arabs? The, no, the Arabs part basically... Part of the legal part, part, part of the, the large portion of the Israeli Arab population identifies either passively or actively with the enemy. That's got nothing to do with ethnicity. It's got to do with enmity. Well, but that's, okay. that, that's, that's self-identification. Can, can you point to an institutionalized, legalized, racist policy? Of course, policy he, of course he can't. Of course. Of course he can't. We, we can see it uh, on uh, the Arab uh, population in Israel. They got uh, less lands. They got, uh, um, uh, you know, in uh, terms of uh, employment and other uh, facts. So you can see the gaps, what? and you can say this is, only this because this they are considered to be an enemy. You, you know, we can know talk about you know the I former see, I don't Ethiopia. See, I, don't see, I don't see any Arabs clamoring to, 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 to emigrate to egalitarian Arab countries around here. If there was, if there, if, if there was such... It's not the question. Oh, that's exactly the no, question. No, it's not. It's exactly the and question. And former Ethiopian people are really uh, suffering from racism. Uh, the, the, gonna, no, gonna, they're not. I'm going to bring I the conversation. I it on the opposite way. Listen, according to the history of ours and uh, uh, Palestinians mm -hmm. or Arab in general, mm -hmm. we consider to be the same race, actually. So those who try to put a difference between us and them on racist point of view, this is an awful mistake by history, by all means. And the Arabs know this. Speaking about racism in a typical way of colors, for example, I must uh, 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 mention here that everybody knows, by the way, that we risked our special units, our best men in the army, in order to bring those black women to Israel because we love them, we relate them as our brothers. These are part of our people, black people. So this is overly you know, a mistake to do it this way. Another point of view, I would say, I will one finish one this way, man, by saying that people in Europe never stopped uh, getting angry about us Jews for what we did to them in the well, Holocaust. So, so, I want, so I want to kind of go back to yeah, that there was, a there, was bit an, there was an article in the, in the New York Times at, at the beginning when they started bringing Ethiopian Jews here. And I think, it, I, I don't remember who it was, was one well-known columnist who said, for the first time in history, blacks are coming in ships from Africa, not in chains, but, but, but to, to be free people. Don't get me started on that, on that analogy. Uh, it's, I find it very, very problematic. As a mother of Ethiopians as well as Ashkenazi children, uh, I can tell you that it's, it's a very upsetting analogy to hear. We can discuss it perhaps offline. Um, in response to what you were saying about Jeremy Corbyn, there is such glee in hating Israel. There is such self-righteous glee in hating Israel mm. all around the world, and that's nothing new historically. And I'm not sure what we can do about it other than thank you for 
giving another forum for calling that out. What we can call out, more importantly to me in this country, is the is the self-righteous glee of our prime minister and his right-wing people who are calling who are calling who are use, taking a page from Pharaoh's book and saying that there is a people among us who do not follow our laws, which is a lie. Statistically, that's a lie. Sorry? Talking right. about the asylum seekers. He's taking another page from Pharaoh's book saying, we're, we're, oh, I'm sorry, that was Haman saying, there's a people among us who do not follow our laws. Excuse mm. me, a page from ha Haman's book. A page from Pharaoh's book saying that there's a people who will grow and overcome us. That's what Pharaoh said about the Israelites. And we will embitter their lives. Another quote from Pharaoh. I don't know if BB is actually looking up, mm -hmm. you know, a, a Exodus in the book of Esther well, to I, find I, his I'm next not, speech. I'm not sure what but this it's has really to do problematic. With topic, so because I'm not, well, what I'm, like, I'll, tell you, yeah. I'll tell you what has to do with the topic. I mean, I'm not sure what, what racism oh, and, and then the Arab from Ethiopia has to do with the topic either. Let her finish. Yes. Dr. Berko, please. Excuse me. Dr. Berko, please. I'm not sure what, uh, what the Arab from Ethiopia has to do with the topic either. But that said, I'm saying that Jeremy Corbyn and the likes on the right and on the left who have glee in hating Israel have glee in so, hating uh, Jews. What that is that is a long time thing and that's a problematic so thing and what, that's something we need to call out. What but like what, to... what's more important to call out is that when our people do the same thing to others, in the name of our country, lying about people and villainizing people for their what, political what you, what gains. Oh, my <laughs> All right. Um, Thank you. Fortunately, I apologize, everybody. I'm really sorry. I actually really hate you that thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the end. Uh, it's our time for today's ILTV's Israel Weekly. Again, I'd love to thank our guests, all of you for coming in. And all of you for tuning in. Remember to follow us on Facebook at Israel uh, at Israel English News and on Twitter at ILTV News. I'm Aaron Porras, and we'll see you next week.